Hello everyone, Michael Shane Bloom here. In this video, I'm gonna cover one very common post-processing mistake that I see all the time with landscape photography, and this has to do with vignetting, vignetting your photographs. I think vignetting can be a very powerful way to really enhance your images and bring the viewer's eye into the photograph, but when used improperly or incorrectly, it can also be a huge distraction for your photograph and actually take away from the composition. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an example of that, but I'm also going to show you my favorite way to create a vignette in Lightroom to have full control over your images. So let's go ahead and dive in. I've got this image here from the Faroe Islands and uh, I really like the way this one came out um, with this little figure standing here on the edge of the cliff. You've got these fjords in the background, really nice sense of scale, beautiful lighting here, and I wanna accentuate some of the drama here in the sky. Also really bring your attention into this middle area of the photograph because I don't really need the viewer looking down here towards the bottom or up here towards the edges. So I just wanna make a nice vignette that'll bring the viewer's eye into this photograph. If we go ahead and go to the post crop vignetting, which is available in Lightroom, this is just Lightroom's vignette tool. We can take the amount down. And as you can see, <laughs> that uh, doesn't look so great. It's very, very noticeable. It's kind of just like a dark edge around the entire photograph. It doesn't really add anything to the image. Um, you do have control over here, so you can change the midtone and the roundness, and of course the feather. Now that does help, that looks better, but it still looks so punchy around the shadows of um, the edges, and also you just don't have any control over the tones or where the vignette actually is in the photograph. Now let's try and vignette a different way. Let's go to this copy that I've made of this photograph and let's use the radial filter this time. So I'm gonna bring the radial filter in from the center of the photograph and drag this point out. And the further you drag it, the softer the vignette will be. Double tap effect if you already have a slider applied here. Um, so we can take the exposure down and you can see that creates a vignette for us. You can also change the feather. Also, you can invert it if you find that what you're doing is affecting what's inside the circle. Already, that's looking much better than the vignette created in Lightroom. If we scroll back and forth, it, it already looks a lot softer and definitely blends more with the image. But this isn't all you can do with this tool. There's actually a lot of different selections you can make to the vignette to make it more controlled for this specific photograph. So the first thing is it's nice to be able to move the vignette around the photograph. You can see we can target more of the sky or more of the foreground or even darken this area on the left side or vice versa. So beyond just the exposure slider, you can also affect any of these other sliders. So we can take the contrast up and down. We can also apply edits to just the highlights in the photograph or also the shadows. So let's say we wanted to kind of take down some of these brighter tones in the sky. We could bring down the highlights here and bring down the whites. And then vice versa, let's say the effect is just a little too strong for our taste in the shadows and the blacks, we could also then increase the shadows a little bit to soften up the vignette and the blacks. So just a really powerful tool for being as selective as you want for a specific or individual photo, because each individual photo may require a different type of vignette. Here's the first vignette that was just created with uh, Lightroom's post-crop vignetting. And here is our new vignette that's a lot softer, blends a lot more with the photograph, and uh, frankly, in my opinion, is a lot more effective. So this vignette works for most cases, and uh, this is the way I apply most vignettes to my images, but let me show you a way to get even more selective. So here is another example. This image was taken in Scotland. And I really love the composition here, the sunlight shining through the fog, this V-shape that frames the spire right here. But there's also some unnecessary distractions around the edge of the photograph that I'd like to remove. 
It would also be nice to darken the sky and just bring a little bit more drama in here. So we're going to use the radial gradient. And let's make one. This time we're going to just target the sky. So let's kind of go up here, drag this down, double tap effect to reset the sliders, and bring down the exposure. We can also do the same thing as before by targeting the highlights, the whites, and also bring up the shadows a bit. Let's say we really didn't want um, to darken this area of the cliff so much. Um, well, we can actually remove this vignette from the shadows in another way by using the range mask, which is another really powerful tool. It's one of my favorite tools in Lightroom, and I made a whole tutorial about the range mask. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that if you're interested. But basically, it just allows you to target different luminance values in the photograph. So you can target the shadows or the highlights or even the midtones. I'm going to click on luminance here show luminance mask. This is going to show us where this mask is actually targeting. So you can see um, all that's in red is where we're going to be targeting. And if we bring the range mask up from the left side, we're actually going to remove it from the shadows. And now you can see that we have our vignette, but it's only affecting those highlight tones or the brighter tones that are in the sky. So just showing you in a before and after here, now we have that vignette that's really targeted towards the sky. So with this edit, we can also adjust the temperature and the tint um, of pretty much any of these radial filters. So if you wanted to bring a little bit more blue into the sky, or maybe some magenta, you could do that here with this filter. Now what we can do is make another radial filter, but this time we can do our edit more for the foreground. So we can really take out some of these brighter highlights that we feel are distractions in the photograph and maybe uh, make this vignette a little bit more towards the right side so we're not affecting the sky. And so we're going to bring that exposure down again, bring down the highlights, bring down the whites. And then again, we can go through with our range mask and play around with the luminance here. We can take that luminance out of the highlights here and maybe a little bit out of the shadows too. So now we're just targeting the midtones down here in the foreground and a little bit of the sky on this side. And we can take that down even further and I'm just going to extend this out a little bit further so it doesn't hit quite as much of the sky over here on the left side. So I'm just kind of dragging this back and forth to decide how much vignetting we want actually up here on that left side. So definitely not a final product here, but a great example of how you can target different areas with these radial filters and create a completely unique vignette to your photograph that not only helps to enhance the composition, helps to really showcase some of those areas that you want the viewer to look at, and also kind of hide the areas around the edges or maybe distractions from your image. So with that, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Helps me out a lot and subscribe to the channel because I have some new videos coming out soon. Um, in the comments, I'd love to hear some suggestions of tutorials you might like to see in the future. And if you're interested in learning more about my post-processing, I do have links in the description for a free Lightroom tutorial. As always, I appreciate you sticking around. Thanks for the support, and I'll catch you in the next one.